Is Aisha a reliable narrator of hadith? Can we consider her to be among the elite believers, the most righteous believers, whereby we can take a hadith from her and learn from the sun, learn about the sunnah of the Prophet from her? This is a question. Is Aisha considered an authority figure, a legitimate authority figure, a reliable authority figure after the death of the Prophet? Now, of course, Sunni scholars would say, yes, absolutely. She is you know, the most beloved, the most pious, the most devout, the most knowledgeable. And therefore, Sunni, Sunni Islam would grade her very high on the scale of reliability and righteousness. However, Shia scholars do not uh, consider Aisha to be a high-ranking believer. We do not consider her to be a reliable narrator of hadith. And this is not because you know Shias have a personal problem with Aisha. It's not because they have a personal vendetta against uh, against this individual. It's because of what the Quran has said about her that is deeply troubling to to Shia Muslims. Now, what am I referring to here? What does the Quran say about Aisha that gives Shia scholars pause and it gives them reason to? set aside her traditions and not to consider her a, uh, a reliable authority figure after the Prophet. If we look at Surah At-Tahrim, Surah 66 of the Quran, particularly the third and the fourth and the fifth, fifth verse. Now, I don't want to go into too many details about the occasion of the revelation. For the sake of brevity, I just want to mention the points that are relevant to our discussion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah At-Tahrim, beginning with verse number 3, he speaks to us about an incident that took place in the Prophet's marital life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذْ أَسَرَّ النَّبِيُّ إِلَىٰ بَعْضِ, بعض أَزْوَاجِهِ حَدِيثًا And remember when the Prophet confided to one of his wives a statement. The Prophet shared something very confidential with one of his wives. Something that was a secret. Something that he did not want to be divulged. وَإِذْ أَسَرَّ النَّبِيُّ إِلَىٰ بَعْضِ أزواجه. There was a sir, there was a secret, there was sensitive information that the Prophet shared with one of his wives. Something that he wanted to remain confidential. فَلَمَّا نَبَّأَتْ بِهِ And when she informed another of it. So what happened? One of the wives of the Prophet, and this, this, uh, this verse is in reference to Aisha and Hafsa. And this is unanimously agreed upon by Sunni and Shia Mufassirin of the Quran. The Prophet divulged, he, he, he divulged a secret to Aisha. He shared a secret with Aisha. And she, she divulged that secret. فَلَمَّا نَبَّأَتْ بِهِ وَأَظْهَرَهُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ Allah revealed to the Prophet that your wife broke the trust. She exposed and publicized that which you wanted to be a secret. فَلَمَّا نَبَّأَتْ بِهِ وَأَظْهَرَهُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ عَرَّفَ بَعْضَهُ وَأَعْرَضَ عَنْ بَعْضُ And when she informed another of it, and Allah showed it to him, he made known part of it and ignored a part. فَلَمَّا نَبَّأَهَا بِهِ The Prophet confronted this wife. He confronted Aisha about the matter. قَالَتْ مَنْ أَنْبَأَكَ هَذَا the response of this wife when the Prophet confronted her and told her that you revealed my secret, you revealed that confidential piece of information that I gave you. Her reaction was, who told you? Who told you? How did you know? Who told you? Who told you? And the Prophet said, that Allah informed me, the all-knowing, the one who is acquainted, the one who is khabir. Now question here. You are living with the Prophet. You know the Prophet receives revelation. Allah has exposed the plots and the schemes to his Prophet on a number of occasions. He has exposed the plots and the schemes of the hypocrites. The Prophet oftentimes knows about things before they happen. He knows about the secret machinations of his enemies. Why are you so surprised? that the Prophet knows about what you did behind his back. Are you not familiar? Do you not know that your husband is connected to Jibra'il? So this is a really strange thing to say. Who told you? Who do you think told him? 
Who, who has been speaking to him for more than, for, more, for almost two decades? Who has been speaking to him other than Allah, other than his Lord? Now, this is not where the, the main problem is. Now, you might think that, you know, what's the big deal? You know, she, the Prophet told her some her secret and she divulged the secret. It's not, it's not a big deal. Why are we making such, such a big deal about it? The answer is, I'm not making a big deal out of it. Allah is making a big deal out of it. If you look at number four, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, In tatuba ilallah faqad sagat ulubukuma. If you two wives repent to God, so Allah is now speaking about the necessity of making tawbah. What does this mean? If Allah is commanding them to repent, and we'll see in the, the rest of the verse how Allah threatens them with the strongest language. Allah is commanding them to repent. If it wasn't a sin, if it wasn't a big deal, why does Allah use such strong language with them? That means that they committed a major sin. In tatuba ilallah, faqad sagat qulubukuma. If you two wives repent to God, it is best. For your hearts have deviated. This is quite a verse. Allah is commanding them to repent. He's saying that it's better if you repent for what you did. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes a statement about their hearts. You know, if a, if a Muslim commits a sin, do you say that your heart has deviated from the truth? That's a bit too harsh. If someone commits a sin, at most you could say what? You could say that your action was a deviation from the truth. Your action was a deviation from faith, not your heart. The fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He didn't say that your actions deviated. Allah is making a much more severe statement here. Your hearts have deviated from the truth. Allahu Akbar. In tatuba ilallah faqad sagat qulubukuma. This is a serious matter. Allah is saying your hearts have deviated. And then what does Allah say? وَإِن تَظَاهَرَ عَلَيْهِ If you conspire against him. Now again, there's a lot of debate about what the Prophet divulged. What was the secret? What were they trying to do? The Qur'an is silent about this. And I don't want to get into the, that, those details. The point is here that these two wives of the Prophet, Aisha and Hafsa, according to the Qur'an, they committed a major sin. So much so that Allah is commanding both of them to repent. That would be better for you if you repent. If it's not a big deal, why is Allah telling them to do tawbah? And not only is Allah inviting them to repent, He's saying that, فَقَدْ صَغَتْ قُلُوبُكُمَا Indeed, your hearts have deviated. It's not just about action. You know, Muslims make mistakes all the time. We, we deviate in our actions. But Allah is speaking about, with you two, your hearts have deviated. And then Allah says what? Allah, He escalates the situation. وَإِن تَظَاهَرَ عَلَيْهِ And if you conspire against my Prophet, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ مَوْلَاهُ وَجِبْرِيلُ وَصَالِحُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ ظَهِيرٌ Look at how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses this very strong language. He says, if you can, He threatens them. If you dare conspire against Him, then indeed Allah is his mawla, God is his protector, and Jibra'il is his protector, and the righteous of the believers are his protectors, and, and all of the angels are his backers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he is essentially doing what? Allah is basically saying that if you want to go to war with my prophet, know who you are fighting against. Does this sound like something very trivial that they said, they said, you know, Ya Rasulullah, we don't like the smell of your breath because you're drinking some type of drink with Zainab bin Jahash. Is this, a, is this a trivial issue? Obviously, it's not a trivial issue because Allah is commanding them, repent for what you did. Your hearts have deviated from the truth. If you continue to conspire against him, know that Allah is his protector. Jibra'il is his protector. The righteous believers are with him. The angels are his backers. In fact, the story of what happened, the betrayal that took place was so significant that Bukhari reports that Umar went to see his daughter to go and see what happened. 
the Prophet had removed himself from their presence. He isolated himself. He went into seclusion for a month away from them. So Umar reports in Sahih al-Bukhari, Aradtu an, so Abdullah bin Abbas, you know, obviously he's one of the experts on the Quran. He said that I asked Umar about these verses. Who were those two ladies who tried to conspire against the Prophet? I asked him, من المرأتان اللتان تظاهرتا على رسول الله? I asked Umar, and Umar of course, uh, I asked uh, Abdullah ibn Abbas, he had a close relationship with Umar. You know, they could have, they had these private conversations. He could ask him, you know, very you know, candidly about these issues. And Umar answered him, فما أتممت Before I could even finish my sentence, Umar responded to me saying that those two, ver the verses in Surah At-Tahreem where Allah threatens two wives of the Prophet, it's about Aisha and Hafsa. An admission from one of their father, one of the fathers, that these verses are about Aisha and Hafsa. And what's interesting here, Subhanallah, the Prophet added, There are many who conspired against the Prophet. The Kuffar conspired against the Prophet. Munafiqeen conspired against the Prophet. Many have conspired against the Prophet. But this is the only instance in the Qur'an where Allah uses this type of strong language, where He creates an arena, and He puts two people on one side, Aisha and Hafsa on one side, and then Allah on the other side, He says, He brings Himself down, and He brings Jibra'il down, and all of the angels, and all of the, the, and the righteous believers, and He says, this is a, if you continue, this is the battle. It's a battle between you two, and Allah, and the Prophet, and the angels, and the righteous believers. It really makes you wonder. What, what happened? What were they conspiring against the Prophet? This is the Qur'an. This is not a hadith where you can say that, oh, this is like, read this verse and ask yourself, can we consider these two individuals to be high-ranking believers?